visual case, um, as long as the audio is good. She's like a combination of our two assistant coaches. Um, I mean, I, I love I love her infectious personality. Do you want me to get it to Mario? I'm almost I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Welcome to game two of day one of the inaugural season of the FGCL Softball League, and it is a fantastic matchup, the marquee matchup of the day. To close out day one, the Manatee Squeeze and the Pioneers battling it out, national champions, All-Americans all over the coaching ranks and two very talented rosters facing off to conclude day one. Earlier today, you just saw it moments ago, the River Mocks shut things down in extras to beat the Lynx 8-6. And then over on field two, the Impact beat up on Fast Pitch U 13-10. So the Impact and the River Mocks winners on day one. And now we'll see who can take it between the Pioneers and the Manatee Squeeze. I'm Gray Robertson here along with you. I'll be here all summer. I'll be here all night as we watch game two of the doubleheader here on field one. I am from the University of Alabama. Call softball on the Crimson Tide Sports Network along with my partner, Tom Canterbury. Shout out, Tom. We also have a podcast called the Out of the Box Podcast, at out of the box underscore pod on Twitter. And, of course, I've got my SEC Network shirt on today because I do games on the streaming side of the SEC Network along with usually Sydney Little John Watkins or Rachel Bobo Calhoun calling Alabama softball. Very excited to see the game back at a collegiate level. I'm very excited to see summer softball getting its due. And we've got some fantastic, fantastic teams here in this event. After the world was shut down 
about three months ago, March 12th, the day that the Women's College World Series was canceled, and things slowly reopening across America, and sports are coming back, and earlier today, softball was officially back, and now we'll see what should be a fascinating matchup between the Squeeze and the Pioneers. Pioneers are the home team. So we'll see the squeeze bat first, and here is the order for the Manatee squeeze. Leading off is Alexis John. She's playing center in the two spot. Stormy Kotzelnik, the recruit going to Washington next year. She's playing over at third. Abby Stewart is in the three hole and catching. Cleaning up Taylor Johnson out of Wisconsin. She's the extra hitter. Kenna Wilkie, the pitcher, will bat fifth. And they're facing Kayla Howold, who throws a first pitch strike in to Lexi Johns, and we're off and running. Jordan Wolf in the sixth spot. Summer Baker batting seventh. Nikki Cuckran in the eighth spot. Sarah Berfume batting ninth. And Megan Ricks rounding things out in the 10 hole. Remember, 10 spots in the batting order here in the FGCL. 01 misses. To Lexi Johns. Alexis Johns out of Sarasota, Florida. Sophomore last year out of Florida International. Was on the 2019 Commerce USA all freshman team. Lays down a nice bunt that just rolls foul. In the circle, it's Kayla Howold, freshman from Campbell out of Bradenton, nearby Lakewood Ranch High School. One, two, slap to third. And Kroll has it in time for out number one. Let's set the defense for you for the Pioneers. Howald pitching behind the dish. It's McKenzie Ball. Petty over at first, Jordan Petty. Megan Piero at second. Over at short, Kayla Poston. Kennedy Kroll at third. And then we'll give you the outfield in just a moment as Stormy Kotzelnik steps in. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Pursuity out and left for the Pioneers. Woods in center. And out and right is Kara Saylor. Owanda Kotzelnik fouled back towards us. Quickly 0-2. Two. two Stormy Kotzelnik, incoming freshman, going to play for Heather Tarr out in Seattle. Kotzelnik out of Carmel, Indiana, according to Softball America, the number 29 recruit in the country in her graduating class. 0-2 got her looking. She gives a glance, didn't love the call, but she'll head back to the dugout after Howald strikes her out on the inside corner. Kayla Howald has a plethora of pitches. Her best pitch, according to her head coach, Erica Beach, is the rise ball. She can throw it on multiple planes. That's her strikeout pitch, but, hey, maybe she'll uh, go in on the hands a couple times with that curveball. Either way, two gone. Here in the top of the first, and a first pitch strike to Abby Stewart out of Clemson, freshman last year for the Tigers in their first season as a softball program. Really good start for the Tigers despite the shortened season. Really good to see Clemson competitive in year one under Coach Rittman. Foul back. Abby Stewart in 2020 was hitting 222 when the season came to an end.
One, two, out to left. And running underneath it is Prasuti for out number three to retire the side. One, two, three inning for Kayla Howald. And now we'll see the squeeze out on defense with pitcher Kenna Wilkie. We'll introduce you to the squeeze defense and the Pioneers' order as they try and get on the board to start their season here on night one of the FGCL. We head to the bottom of the first inning, day one of the FGCL Softball League in the night session. Game two of the doubleheader here on field one. Manti Squeeze went three up, three down, and now they will turn to their hurler in the circle. Junior last year from Northwestern, Kenna Wilkie out of Braidwood, Illinois. 2018 Big Ten All-Freshman Team member, and 2020 was off to a Decent start, a 3-2-7 ERA, but 2019 really burst onto the scene with a fantastic 11-2 record. Good option for the Wildcats behind Danielle Williams as that team snuck in to a regional hosting spot in the NCAA tournament a year ago. Power pitcher, fastball chain. She's got a drop curve. Look for that, and she can throw any pitch and any count is what head coach Mario Hernandez said. We'll see her do that against a pretty good lineup for the Pioneers. Paris Woods will lead it off. Woods, junior last year out of Syracuse, transfer from Florida Southwestern State. Cameo Pursuti is on deck. And in the three spot, Grace Prom. Kayla Poston in the four hole. McKenzie Ball batting fifth. Taylor Gilmore batting sixth. First pitch from Wilkie. Misses low. Megan Piero will bat seventh. Kennedy Kroll in the eighth spot. Jordan Petty in ninth. And Kara Saylor, that magical 10 spot in the lineup. Defensively for the squeeze, Berfume out in left. Johns in center. Wolf out in right. Kotzelnik at third. Ricks at short. Baker at second. Cuckran at first. And Stewart behind the plate catching Wilkie. She catches ball two to Paris Woods. Woods was absolutely crushing it at Florida Southwestern State. In 2019, she was batting 408 at a 446 OBP, sitting 397 as a freshman, NJCAA All American as a sophomore. Got to Syracuse, started in 13 games, was hitting 205 with five ribbies, two doubles, two triples. And now she's got a hitter's count. The 3-0 pitch from Wilkie misses, and Wilkie issues a four-pitch walk to start off her season. Paris Woods is aboard, and she's got speed, folks. So we'll see if Abby Stewart's arm is tested. Home plate umpire says, you're meeting a bit too long. It's been a while. Some of these uh, players need to get acclimated to the regular goings on of softball. Is now Mario Hernandez, I'm sure, being told, hey, uh, your players can't meet for five minutes in the circle.
Camio Prasuti steps in with Paris Woods at first. And now five straight balls to start off the game for Kenna Wilkie. Prasuti, an incoming freshman going to Florida Atlantic. Another player going to play for Joan Joyce. Prasuti out of Fort Pierce, Florida. And that is ball five from Wilkie. The 2-0. Too high, 3-0. and Pursuity, quick as well, also ran track in high school. And no reason to try and swing when Wilkie hasn't hit the strike zone yet. Eight pitches, eight balls, and now two on via the walk, which draws out Mario Hernandez. The squeeze, one of those teams with only three arms, so when the starter's in trouble, you don't have a ton of options to help her out. That'll draw Coach Hernandez out to the circle. Coach Hernandez, volunteer assistant at Jacksonville as well, hopped in in the 2019 season after coaching at Plainfield North High School. Prior to that, also played baseball. Started at Moraine Valley Community College. Finished off at the University of St. Francis. Part of an all-star coaching staff. His assistant has won a national champion. That's Carson Gordon. It's been awesome to get to know the two of them in preparation for this week. Now we're seeing the squeeze tested a bit as Grace Prom, or the Prom Queen, as she was dubbed in the cages the other day. She steps in with two on and nobody out. Bottom of the first, no score, squeeze and pioneers. And I'm not sure if we're going to see a strike called all night, apparently. That one misses away to Prom. Freshman. Came from Santa Fe, her head coach is here, Lindsey Fico of the Lynx. Just saw the Lynx fall 8-6 in extras. Prom out of Lake Mary, Florida. Hey, there we go, that's a strike in there, one and one. Prom as a freshman was hitting 345 before the year was ended due to the COVID-19 crisis including 26 RBI and a 509 OBP. The 1-1. One, one. Wilkie just missing to her right right now. It's 2-1 to prom. Jenna Wilkie, a player who's seen some big-time moments. Like we talked about, a member of the Northwestern Wildcats. That was a team that advanced to Supers and the Norman Super Regional in 2019. She was a big part of that. Swing and a miss right there, two and two. Wilkie's tournament ERA was 1.97, and she had a hot bat as well. A couple home runs in the Evanston Regional, including a grand slam off of SIU. She'll bat in the next inning. She needs to get out of the bottom of the first here. Count goes full. Folks, if you want to get in on the conversation, let us know where you're watching, where you're listening, if you're doing something, I don't know. Let us know where you are. Tweet us. As Wilkie gets out number one with the strikeout of prom, one down. Tweet us at GrayGrayY underscore Robertson on the Twitter or at out of the box underscore pod. Let us know where you are. We'd love to hear from you. Already heard from our good friend Tara Henry from D1 Softball, also a former UCLA Bruin. It's Kayla Poston, the freshman out of Barry, steps in. Rise goes high, 0-1. Poston out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 253 average in 2020. 
Had 12 runs batted in and 10 doubles out of her 25 hits. One down, Woods at second, Prasuti at first. And those runners will advance as the ball gets away from Stewart. Woods moves to third, Prasuti to second. Still one down, no score bottom of the first. But the Pioneers really threatening as Wilkie continues to struggle to find the strike zone. Two walks and a strikeout for Wilkie. Two oh high, three and out. Wilkie needs it and finds it on the outside corner, three and one. That one misses on the inside corner and the bases are loaded as Poston Draws the walk. One down, bottom of the first, and now we're going to see Ken Wilkie really have to dig deep against McKenzie Ball. Some kind of base hit to get the Pioneers on the board here in the bottom of the first. The 0-2 upstairs. Spokey took a bit off that one, 1-2. One and two. If you're just joining us, you weren't watching game one. Very loose infield, loose dirt. Saw it make an impact a couple of times in the first game of our doubleheader. And also a foreign outfield for a lot of these players. Still learning the lay of the land. And we'll be moving locations a couple times each week. So it's going to be learning on the fly for a lot of these folks. The one, two. Popped up. Wilkie's got it. Infield fly rule was called anyway. And two down now. Bases still loaded.
2018 Big Ten All-Freshman Team member. Hit 341 as a sophomore in 2019. 2020 not off to the best start, using the summer to try and get back into form. 1-1 one, one is low, 2-1. Folks, we're glad you're with us. There were a couple technical issues in game one. We hope they are more resolved here in game two. Gray Robertson here in the booth with you. It's Johnson. Straight up the shoot. Coming over and making the catch is McKenzie Ball for out number one. First pitch in to Kenna Wilkie. Comes in for a strike. The pitcher for the squeeze, taking a chance with the bat in her hands. Pretty good hitter for the Wildcats. The 0 1 from Howald. Got her on the rise, 0 2. Wilkie was hitting 200 in 2020, 224 average with 16 RBI in 2019. Oh, 2 out to center. That'll find the gap. Woods goes to get it and was able to cut it off very nicely as that one looked like it might get all the way to the wall. But it's just a single, the first hit for the squeeze tonight, first hit for Kenna Wilkie. And she stands over next to Carson Gordon on first with one down here in the top of the second. No score, squeeze and pioneers. Here's Jordan Wolf out of Louisville. Junior last season for the Cardinals. She sees strike one come in. Wolfie, as her team has been calling her, hit 324 in 2020. We saw her in Tuscaloosa as the cards came in to play a tournament at the Rhodes House. Wolf has really been improving the last couple seasons on campus. Average went up from 219 and 2019 to 324 in the shortened season. And that one out to right, and it's off the umpire. <laughs> Wilkie will stop at second. And because of the uh, slow mobility from our friend out at second base, that might have Saved the Pioneers a bag. As Wilkie had to hold up at second. He seems okay. Either way now, two on, one down. Chance for Summer Baker to drive in a run. First pitch, misses to Baker. Freshman last year for Florida Atlantic, calls Haines City, Florida home. Had eight RBI in 2020. Looking for RBI one, maybe two, with the correctly placed ball. low, 2-0. and oh. Howald powered through the top of the first. Three up, three down. By my count, only threw two balls. We've already seen two straight singles by the squeeze. 2-0 -oh count to Baker. That went in for strike one. Got 
Got a tweet from Sarah Kennedy watching the game earlier today from all the way in Canada. Thank you for joining us. So that one's way up in the air. And an infield fly called yet again. Two down. Here is Nikki Cuckran, sophomore out of Northwestern. First pitch strike. Another player who really stepped up for the Wildcats in the 2019 NCAA tournament had a 429 average on the uh, road to Supers for Northwestern. It's a 16 overall seed. That one to short. Flip to first is in time to get Cuckerin for out number three. Two left on base for the squeeze, and right now it's been a story of the stranded. We head to the bottom of the second. No score still. Pioneers coming back to the plate. Kennedy Crawl steps in with one down. Takes a first pitch ball. Crawl, a junior last year from Huntington out of Claypool, Indiana. History education major, which means she's probably smarter than me. The 1-0. Swing and a miss on the rise, 1-1.
She's standing over there next to Carson Gordon, the assistant coach for the Squeeze, grad assistant at Palm Beach Atlantic, but known for being on that Florida State team that won the national title in 2018, coming out of a loser's bracket, lost their first game to UCLA, and then one out, including beating the Bruins twice on semifinal Sunday. The team Florida State beat in that champ series was Washington, where Stormy Kotzelnik, who's at the plate, is going as we bring it full circle here. And she takes ball one, struck out looking on a call she did not love back in the first. That one right back up the middle, too. Tough play at short, no chance for Poston. Johns will head for third. The throw from center doesn't get her. It got away from Kroll. And John stands at third. Kotzelnik advanced to second on the throw. And suddenly, with two outs, two in scoring position for the squeeze. First pitch to Abby Stewart misses away. Stewart flew out to left in the first. That one misses inside, 2-0. and oh. Go back to assistant coach Carson Gordon for just a second. One of my favorite memories from her Playing days for the Seminoles was a uh, beautiful moment in regionals and inside the park home run against Auburn to win 2-1 over the Tigers. What I did not love was seeing her hit a home run off Madison Preston in Tuscaloosa in 2018, a part of that national championship season. Two one to Stewart. That one is crushed. Way back and making the catch is Sailor as that ball just died up in the air for out number three. More runners stranded. Four hits so far for the squeeze today, but nothing to show for it. We head to the bottom of the third. Scoreless, squeeze and pioneers. Who will score first? We'll maybe find out when the Pioneers come to the plate here on night one of the FGCL Softball League. To the bottom of the third we go, and so far a pitcher's duel despite multiple threats by both teams. Still scoreless, Pioneers and Squeeze due up for the Pioneers. It's 10-1-2. and two. Tara Saylor, Paris Woods, and Cameo Prasuti against Kenna Wilkie, who walked three in the first, but got a strikeout to leave him loaded and then made quick work. Six pitches in the second. First pitch to Kara Saylor, hard foul. Saylor, a sophomore last year from Stetson, continuing the trend of seeing multiple hatters here out of Bradenton, Manatee High School. 2020 hit 138.
and two hard but foul shots make it 0 and 2. Wilkie seems to be finding her groove. And she gets a strikeout right there, a swing and a miss. Three pitch strikeout for Wilkie, one gone here in the bottom of the third. Back in that first inning, Coach Mario Hernandez sent Paige Schindler and Jenna Green to the bullpen to warm up. They're back in the dugout now, hanging out. No need with Wilkie doing good work. As Paris Woods comes back up. She was a part of the walk fest in the first. Four pitch walk to lead off the game. Paris Woods has yet to see a strike tonight. Two zero -oh, hammered, but drifting towards the vehicles. And the 2-1. Nice curveball. Cut its way back in. 2-2. Two and two. That's that pitch. Wilkie was trying to get for a strike in the first, but just wasn't moving right. Now gets the call. And Woods is aboard with one down here in the top of, excuse me, the uh, bottom of the third. Still scoreless, but a chance for the top of the order to maybe get some run production. Prasuti back up. She also had a four pitch walk in the first. Woods dancing around over at first, right next to her assistant coach, Carly Milburn, former Tarleton State pitcher, actually from Mansfield, Texas, just like one of the Pioneers pitchers, Sophie Hannibus. Here's a 2-0 to Prasuti. Janice misses 3-0. Kenna Wilkie with a bit of a smile on her face. I'm sure she's seen tough strike zones before. She has pitched at Oklahoma after all. Back when Northwestern traveled to Norman and Supers. That one floats in for strike one. Great to have so many people tuning in and tweeting in, letting us know where they are. This Prasuti chases the high stuff. Count runs full. 
No sign of movement from Paris Woods over at first. Here's the payoff. Misses away. And Prasuti is aboard. Yet to officially appear in this game. And with the one down, Kenna Wilkie will have to dig deep yet again. Fourth walk she has surrendered here tonight. Here's Grace Prom. That one just off the knob of the bat. An unfortunate foul ball for Prom, who struck out in the first. Oh, one just misses one and one prom looking for some situational hitting pioneers 0 for 3 tonight so far with runners in scoring position hard foul one and two We're in the bottom of the third. Scoreless Pioneers and squeeze. One out, two on. Kind of Wilkie in the circle for the Manatee squeeze, trying to get out of a yet another jam. The one, two. Rise goes high, two and two. Earlier today, the River Mox in extra innings beat the Lynx.
third. A chance to maybe add some more. Here's Taylor Gilmore. 0 for 1 tonight, struck out in the first. Chase the rise, fouled it back. Runners on second and third. Gilmore pops it up to first. Easy play for Cuckran for out number three. However, finally runs on the board. Here in the bottom of the third, McKenzie Ball converts with a two RBI double. And the Pioneers have a two nothing lead on the squeeze. We're through three, headed to the fourth here on night one of the FGCL Softball League. Off to the top of the fourth we go. Two nothing Pioneers on the squeeze. Due up for the Manatee squeeze. It's four, five, six. Johnson, Wilkie, and Jordan Wolf trying to respond after the Pioneers got two in the bottom half of the third inning. And doing work still in the circle for the home team is Kayla Howald, who so far has given up four hits, but is Cause the squeeze to strand four runners. Here's Taylor Johnson, fouled out in the second, takes ball one. One to Johnson, hammered foul. Taylor Johnson, as we discussed, part of a Wisconsin team that unfortunately was one of the teams that we've seen not allow the seniors to come back after they were granted an NCAA waiver this year. So unless it's happened and I haven't read it, Caitlin Menz, Kayla Conwent, a lot of really excellent players for the Badgers are either done with softball or looking for a new home. Here's the one, two to Taylor Johnson. Went after that one out to right and making a diving snag is Sailor. Second time she's made a big catch out in right and there's one gone. Sailor laid out that one looping to the grass, well hit on a pitch up in the zone by Taylor Johnson. But Sailor saves probably a couple bases and retires Johnson for out number one here in the fourth. Kenna Wilkie up. Kenna Wilkie had the first hit of a night for the squeeze. That was back in the second. She got all the way to second base. 
but then was left stranded after getting there with one out. Swing and a miss. Taylor Howald right now really wheeling and dealing. As the wind really picks up coming straight in our faces. Chases that one well outside, one and two. And Wilkie fouled it off, but chasing another pitch well out of his own. Popped up, and that one falls. It was a long run for Kroll at third, and no communication between her and Howald. Means that is, I suppose, an infield single. First pitch comes in for a strike to the six hole hitter Jordan Wolf, who also singled back in the second, following up Wilkie's base hit. And that one hammered out to the gap. Cutting it off nicely is Woods. Wilkie will try for third, but the throw is off. And Wolf advancing to second on the throw. Puts runners on second and third with one down here in the bottom of the fourth. Pioneers lead it 2 nothing, But a chance for the squeeze to strike back as head coach Eric Beach comes out to have a discussion. Erica Beach out there, again, a former player for the Arizona State Sun Devils, first team All-American in 1999, threw a perfect game that year against the Cal Bears, inducted into the ASU Hall of Fame in 2012, and also fifth in Arizona State history and win. She was telling me, though, she almost went to Alabama before deciding to settle down in Tempe and play for Linda Wells. And now needing her pitcher, Howald, to really fight through this. Second time in this game, the squeeze have had two on with one out. Wilkie's at third. Wolf is at second. Here's Summer Baker at the plate. First pitch away. Baker popped up. Infield fly was called in the second. One zero floats in, nicely done. One and one. Foul back. Squeeze 0 for 3 today with runners in scoring position. Looking for that base hit. Down 2 nothing. Baker. Foul tipped into the glove for strike 3. 
Nicely done by Hillwald, our third K of the night. First pitch to Cuckran over to second. Tough play. In time, got her. They'll say she had the toe on the bag, and Coach Hernandez immediately coming out to argue. And he asked for another look at it. It was a long throw for Piero. Petty had to dive. And the call is confirmed, because we don't have replay here. So Hernandez will make that disappointed walk back over to the dugout, and the side is retired. A bang-bang defensive play. The Pioneers have really made it look good on the field. And once again, the squeeze. Strand a pair. Now six runners left on base for the Manatee squeeze here in this game. 2 nothing Pioneers. We head to the bottom of the fourth here on night one of the Florida Gulf Coast Softball League. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Pioneers leading at 2-0 on the Manatee Squeeze. Big story of the night. Six hits so far for the Squeeze, but six runners left on base. The Pioneers have only had two hits so far, but got a big two-out hit in the third from McKenzie Ball. That double brought in a pair, and that's why it's 2-0 Pioneers here in the bottom of the fourth. It's 7-8-9, and Megan Piero. Standing in against Kenna Wilkie, who struggled with the walks tonight. Piero popped up in the second. And that one goes high. 3-0 and count. And I see over to my right, Manatee Squeeze head coach Mario Hernandez going to check on the bullpen. May make a change very soon. The 3-0 almost hits her. And that's another four-pitch walk. Walk number six by Kenna Wilkie tonight, and that draws the head coach out to have a chat. Just never seemed comfortable, even when she went through that quick second inning. You have to wonder if perhaps it's just a very odd infield, very loose dirt, but not the start you wanted if you're the squeeze. And because of that, Mario Hernandez makes the call to the bullpen, and we'll see a new pitcher, Paige Schindler, step in. Junior last year out of Louisville, Borden, Indiana. And the cards have... Multiple, multiple fun facts on their website, including the fact that Schindler's favorite athlete, the great Jenny Finch out of Arizona. Schindler, a righty, 
Throws what Coach Hernandez called a very heavy ball. Gets there quick. Doesn't look like it's coming that fast, though. Fastball screw and a drop screw. 840 ERA in 2020 before the break. Actually saw her out in Tuscaloosa. Came in through a scoreless inning and two-thirds of relief against the Crimson Tide. And as she warms up, Coach Hernandez heads back. She'll face Kennedy Kroll, who struck out back in that second inning. Again, so glad so many of you are joining us. Remember, tweet in. Let us know. Where are you? How are you watching? Laptop, phone, tablet? I'm sure there are more ways. Samsung? Projector? Who knows? Already got a tweet from Kristen Johnson watching from San Diego, California. Great to have you with us, Kristen. You can tweet us at Gray, G-R-A-Y underscore Robertson or at out of the box underscore pod. First pitch misses to Krull on the inside edge. Swing and a miss, one and one. Popped up and foul, one and two. Speed in, runner goes. And Piera slides in safely. Nice throw from Stewart behind the plate. But Piera takes her base. First stolen base we've seen successfully done on a straight up steal. At least over here on field one. And a swing and a miss is Kroll. Comes up empty, second strikeout tonight. And she heads back. Paige Schindler has the first out of the inning. Still 2 nothing Pioneers. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Runner on second. One down. Here's Jordan Petty. Had that hard shot back in the second over to Kotzelnik at third. This time takes it high. Gives a little glance to Schindler. She makes her walk. 1-0. Partial line for Wilkie. Remember, she can re-enter, and I assume we'll stay in the batting order. Three innings, two hits, two runs that were both earned. Struck out five, but the big number walked six, and many of them were straight up four-pitch walks. That one clips the inside edge, two and one. Megan Piero stands on second. That one high to Jordan Petty, three and one. Petty a sophomore in 2020 out of Barrie. Comes from Palmetto, Florida, and her 2020 in three games was pretty good. 500 average, two RBI, 667 OBP. Her OBP for the FGCL will get a little better. She takes the walk. And a 
if you're Mario Hernandez. You gotta be really careful with how you manage these pitchers. Only three on the roster. Don't wanna burn one unless you absolutely have to. So that one misses low to Sailor for ball one. Floats in, two and one. That one fouled back. Count goes even two and two. We're in the bottom of the fourth. It's still two nothing Pioneers. The starter. Kenna Wilkie lifted in this inning. Now the reliever, Paige Schindler, trying to get out of what has been kind of a regular occurrence. Runners on base for both teams. So far in this game, we've seen the Pioneers leave five on base, six for the squeeze as clutch hitting has been a bit hard to come by. Right now the difference is a McKenzie ball double that drove in two back in third. 2-2. Two, two. Up in the air. Wind might make this one tough. Long run and just out of the reach of the second baseman, Baker. Up again, foul again. And time called. As we drift near the 10 o'clock hour here on the East Coast. Late night of softball. That one hammered to left. Drifting foul and there. To make the play is Perfume, two gone. But back to the top of the order we go and Paris Woods, one for one. Walked in the first, singled, and then came around to score in the third. She has seen it well at the plate so far. And sees the first pitch come in low for ball one. Great to have this league available for these players in a year when the 2020 season was cut short. These folks have a chance to really improve on their skills before 2021. College softball will be a very different world for the next four years with the waiver happening. And there are some schools that won't be able to do it, but a lot at the D1 level, especially the Power 5 level, will be able to have those bolstered rosters for the next couple seasons. The one two to Woods, fouled back. And 
and out comes our home plate umpire talking to Paige Schindler. It's the two share a laugh. She's trying to get over a couple of the field issues that the teams have been dealing with. In particular, it's been a bit of a problem for the pitchers. One might think that's why Kenna Wilkie looks so uncomfortable all night. Something happened right there. But we're back for the 2-2 two -two to Woods. Popped up. And in comes Ricks, who makes the catch for out number three. How about a couple more runners left on base? That's now seven for the Pioneers, but they've still got a 2-0 lead. We are through four, headed to the fifth. Squeeze trying to answer back and get on the board here on night one of the FGCL Softball League. Along with our entire crew here at Palmasola Park, welcome back to Squeeze and Pioneers, night one, game two of our doubleheader. Two nothing Pioneers headed to the top of the fifth. I'm Gray Robertson, bringing you along for uh, pretty much all summer. We'll vary up a lot of the games that our crews are on in terms of the announcing duos or solo artists like I've done for most of the day. And we take you to the top of the fifth with a new pitcher in the circle for the Pioneers. That's the righty redshirt sophomore in 2020 out of Colorado State, Taylor Gilmore. She'll open against a pinch hitter. And the first pitch from Gilmore gets away. We'll tell you about the pinch hitter first, potentially a pinch hitter. We've seen at least in some of the other games. Some of these players come in and bat and then just stay in the field. That's Jordan Cadlum, redshirt freshman last year for South Florida and Wesley Chapel, Florida. Gilmore in the circle, a 2.72 ERA and a 4 and 4 record in 2020. And a 2.24 ERA as a Redshirt freshman in 2019. Loves the change, and I've seen it. It's absolutely dirty when it's for a strike, but she's had some control issues since arriving here in Bradenton. That one looked pretty good, two and two. Drop rise, and she's got that really interesting motion. Two, two, there's that change and it got her swinging. One down here in the fifth. Here's Megan Ricks. Struck out looking earlier tonight. First pitch in four strike.
one one to Rex. Well inside, two and one. Gives a wry little smile. Squeeze repping what well, might be my favorite uniforms here. They're a little showy, but I still kind of dig it. Strong helmets as well. Squeeze right now looking for the bats to wake up a bit. Found back two and two. Something we talked about on the Stream Live Tampa Media Day show yesterday. Feels like about a month ago, but it was yesterday. It was the fact that the Pioneers really have a fantastic staff, very steady, four really solid arms in the circle. Gilmore a part of that, and she right now. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens, John. They're, they're basically, the guy, Darren, is basically fronting this entire thing because they didn't get enough money. Like,
door, man. A pinch hitter, Neely Peterson, freshman last year out of Colorado State, will hit for Megan Piero. That one straight up in the air. Wind's going to make this one tough. Long run for Johns, but she makes the catch for out number one. A 
another pinch hitter for the Pioneers. Get a look at who it is in just a moment. If that one misses, that's Brooklyn Lucero. By the way, I beg your pardon, that was a strike. Brooklyn Lucero, the incoming freshman going to NC State. Waits on the change and pops it up. And again, a couple miscommunication issues down on the left side, but it's caught by Perfume for out number two. And let's do it again, another pinch hitter. This is Olivia Doyle, 2020 sophomore out of Indiana Tech, hometown of Elgin, Illinois, business management major. Had a 273 average with five starts in 2020. First chance to swing a bat here this season and fouls the first pitch off for strike one. Squeeze will need a run in the top of the seventh and they will be turning to the bottom of their order, which so far tonight has only reached base once. Seven through 10 has only gotten aboard one time for the squeeze. Too far inside from Schindler, 101. It will be 789 Baker, Cuckran, and Perfume. Fouled off, one and two. Glad you're with us here. It's been a really fun day. Really good softball, just good to see the sport back. And a lot of fun to watch these very, very tight games. I don't believe we've seen a walk-off yet. Maybe we'll get there at some point. One, two. Low and inside, two and two. Change just a bit too high. Count full to Doyle. Nobody on, two out. Pioneers lead by one. They'd love a little bit more insurance before we head to the seventh. Swing and a miss, and Schindler has the K to retire the side. Three up, three down, and Paige Schindler has strikeout number two in relief. We head to the seventh. The squeeze have eight hits tonight, but just one run. They're looking for that big hit. Down 2-1. One. one last chance to try and tie it up or take the lead. Here on the opening night of the FGCL softball.
That one hammered out to the gap. It's way back, it's off the wall. Cuckran will leg it out for second. That's a big time one out double here in the top of the seventh as Nikki Cuckran converts with two strikes to put the squeeze really in business and to put the tying run in scoring position. Pitch low in the zone. And Cuckran just hammered it. One of the harder hit balls we have seen here in this game. And we've got a, what is that, a bat flying around? That's lovely. If it flies in here, I'm going out the window. We'll say goodbye. You can just watch. I've seen that episode of The Office too many times. I know what happens. Here's Sarah Perfume. First pitch strike to Perfume. She was pinch hit for back in the fifth. 0 for 1 tonight, flew out in the third. O one, 1 swing and a miss on the change. Way out in front, 0 and 2. And that one just foul. Squeeze have had a runner on in scoring position in every inning except the first, and yet just one run to show for it. Looking for that big time hit. 0-2 misses, 1-2. and two. And you got to wonder, 
after Alexis Johns was mowed down back in the fifth. Coach Hernandez send Cuckerham with a base hit. Two and two. He's already been aggressive and paid the price a couple times. A hit and run resulted in a runner being caught stealing at third back in the sixth and then that run out at the plate in the fifth that would have tied this game up. Two, two. Oh boy. And that one hits her. And they're gonna say she went all the way around and will strike out despite the ball hitting her. It looked like she was trying to hold up. I believe that should be, I beg your pardon, just be a foul ball. Oh yes, yeah, exactly. I thought it would be a strikeout. And Perfume at first said why, but then she understood. I've had a couple rules issues. That is the way the rule is written. I thought for a second they were asking her to come back, but instead two down on the strikeout and just a bad break for the squeeze. But it's up to Megan Ricks. 0 for 1 tonight. Walked in the fifth, struck out looking in the third. Outside. Nikki Cuckran at second. She gave the squeeze some extra juice with that double. Now she's just looking to find a way to move ahead. 2 and 0. Quick meeting in the circle between the battery. Ball and Gilmore having a chat. Coach Hernandez also discusses strategy with Ricks and Cochran. As we drift on into the night, Two zero count, two away. It's 2-1 Pioneers, top of the seventh. Runner on second. Megan Ricks at the plate. Beautiful movement. And another 2-0 pitch that comes in for a strike with nary a swing to be found. The 2 1 in the dirt. Nice. Snag by ball. 3 and 1. Let's see if Gilmore goes back to the change here behind 3 1. Instead, she missed high, and that puts runners on first and second. Ricks's second walk of the evening, and back to the top of the order with Alexis Johns. Two for three, a single in the third. She got to third base, single in the fifth, and then advanced to second on an error. She was called out at the plate, trying to atone for that here. Corners are in. Wow, that one finds the inside edge. Carson Gordon did not like that one. Over in the first base coaching box, 0-1. Oh and 1-1. Or 
Corners creeping in, like we said. On the slapper, Alexis Johns, a 1-1 slapped foul. Came in on her hands a bit. And the Pioneers are a strike away. On deck for the squeeze is Stormy Kotzelnik. Two for three tonight and had that RBI back in the fifth. The one, two. Off speed, poked over to third. This will be a tough play. Crow will throw to third to get the force and got her. It took a second for Cuckran to get there. And Kroll looked like she was going to try and make an impossible throw to first that in no way would have beaten Johns. But instead, the flip over to third retires the side. Good job as well by the shortstop Poston coming over and making the play to give the Pioneers the 2-1 victory over the squeeze. An epic pitcher's duel here to close out the night. Really well done. Your pitchers of record. The winning pitcher, Kayla Howell, picks up her first victory of the summer season. Went a crisp four full innings. And in those four innings, gave up six hits, but only six runners. Or six Your final day one results. The River Mox over the Lynx, eight, six, and eight innings. Fast pitch you over the impact, 13 to 10, or excuse me, the impact over fast pitch you, I beg your pardon, 13 to 10. And then the Pioneers, two to one over the squeeze. We are back tomorrow night with the uh, slice and fast pitch you at 5.30. The Pioneers and the River Mox at 7.30. And then also the impact versus the Lynx at 7.30. We'll be at an all new park tomorrow night as well. So for our entire crew, for the great Michelle Smith, who threw out the first pitch and sat in with us during the River Mox and Lynx game, I'm Gray Robertson saying good night and so long. We'll see you the rest of the summer. It's been a lot of fun. Softball is back, and it's just going to get better, folks. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.